Alrighty guys, welcome back to this next little video where we're going to be taking a look at the Dell Precision T3500 versus the Huanninger X58 Deluxe. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so there is not a whole heck of a lot difference between these two systems, and for most people, they wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. So, let's first off by saying the similarities. They both perform identically. If you have 24 gigabytes of RAM and an X5680, for example, in both of these PCs, you would physically not be able to notice a difference, simply because there is no difference. They perform identically, but there are a few things that actually are different between the two, but really don't affect performance all too much in most circumstances. I will say most because there is a few that the Dell Precision wins on and there's a few that Dell Precision loses on. So let's talk about that. Okay, so the biggest difference between these two systems is the chipset. The chipset on the Huan Under X58 Deluxe is the Intel 5520 server chipset. Well, the Dell Precision T3500 uses the standard X58 chipset. Now, there are some people who are going to look at that and say, oh, well, then Dell Precision is superior. Not really. Because the 100X58 Deluxe can use ECC buffered, unbuffered, and standard desktop memory, while the Dell Precision can really only use desktop memory and unbuffered memory. But I have not personally tested unbuffered memory, so this comparison, we're going to be taking that away. But I do know it supports desktop memory with zero issue. Now, where it comes to actually how much memory both systems can support. The Huan Under X58 Deluxe can go up to 48 gigabytes of RAM with registered ECC memory, uh, 16 gigabyte DIMMs that are in the three channels. Now there are, is only three DIMM slots on the Huan Under X58 Deluxe. There is only three DIMM slots on the Huan Under X58 Deluxe, meaning that you can only go up to 48 gigabytes of RAM with rather expensive ECC memory. But on the Dell Precision, you have six DIMM slots which means that you can use desktop memory to get less memory, but you can do it cheaper. Primarily when we're looking at 12 gigabytes. Now I am constantly gone back to 12 gigabytes being the happy median for when it comes to a gaming PC. I have been testing out the Joker PC with 12 gigs of RAM and my W3680, which is the exact same architecturally as the X5680, except for the W3680 actually has an unlocked multiplier. But I digress. I've been testing both of those systems out and they performed identically, except for when it came into video editing. Now when it came to video editing, yes, with 12 gigabytes of RAM, the Dell Precision did start lacking behind a little bit, but like I said, it can go up to 24 gigabytes of RAM without any issue. So with that being said, is it really a big deal? No, not really. If you maxed out both of these systems, which I think if you are gonna be building an X58 system, the most RAM you should ever go is 24 gigs, you wouldn't be able to tell a difference. You wouldn't be able to tell a difference architecturally, you wouldn't be able to tell a difference from the CPU or how your graphics card would perform. Cinebench and both these systems were one point away from each other. The uh, physics score on 3D Mark, exactly the same. And the overall score for 3D Mark, exactly the same with my R9 290. So, like I said, the biggest difference really is the chipset. There is, I guess, one other difference that really does make the Dell Precision a little bit more of a better buy if you can actually get your hands on one. Primarily, that's a full computer, guys. Now, the Dell Precision, well, we're just going to say for this instance, it doesn't come with a hard drive. But a Dell Precision would come with a power supply, the motherboard, the CPU, the CPU cooler, and typically like 4 gigs of RAM, maybe. Maybe more, maybe less, I don't know, depending on the where you buy it and who you buy it from. And it'll typically, for the CPU, have a W3503, which is a really, <laughs> really meh kind of a CPU. It is a dual-core, dual-threaded CPU that is clocked at like 2.4 gigahertz, that I think it turbos up to like 2.8 or something, but it's really not impressive. But it will allow you to simply turn on your PC, and if you would need to update the BIOS, you certainly could. But, because most of these workstations were kept in really good shape and taken care of from Fortune 500 companies, or really big companies that cared a lot about the amount of money they were sinking into their PCs, they would essentially have updated the BIOS for you. They would have had everything up to date and cleaned before you would even get your hands on it a couple years later because, well, 
if you're going to spend $3,000 on a computer back in the day, you were going to take care of it, which has been a lot of my experience when I've worked with these older workstations. Now, to uh, go forward and talk about just workstations in general, the Lenovo S20 and the HP Z400. I have not personally used either one of those two workstations, but I have had a lot of experience with the Dell Precision T3500. And out of those three, I would recommend the Dell personally because, well, that's the one that I know the best. And I can honestly say I've never been disappointed by buying a Dell product, especially when it comes to their workstation varieties. Now, the Dell Optiplex and the Dell Precision, which is what I would recommend over the Optiplex, I have found those to be the easiest PCs to ever work with. And if I ever had a question about those things, literally a simple Google search will give me all the answers that I could need, simply because these things have great support and great communities behind them. The Huanander X58 Deluxe, and eh, not so much, where I feel like I'm one of the only English-speaking people actually doing full coverage on this motherboard, which I'm okay with, but at the end of the day, I can't discover everything because I'm only a one-man show. And if I'm not able to get it to work, I'm going to straight up say I'm not able to get it to work, and I know that that has upset a few people where I have said something doesn't work, and then they say, oh, well, you need to do this, 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 and this. And it's like, that is far too many steps for me to reasonably make it work, and it's kind of pointless at the end of it because it's not like it actually matters all too much. Now, when it comes to overall support, the Dell Precision is way better. When it comes to... Well, most things, the Dell Precision is just better. The biggest drawback of the Dell Precision is its form factor. You are stuck with that case. Yes, you can do case modding and put that motherboard into another case. But at that point in time, you can't move the power supply. You're not going to be probably moving the CPU cooler. You're not going to be moving the fans. You're not going to be moving anything. You might as well just buy a stock standard um, ATX X58 motherboard. And at that point in time, you're not saving any money by going for a Dell Precision, so you should just go for the normal Dell Precision and leave it in its case. And yet again, that is where one of its biggest upsides is, is you get a case, a power supply, a CPU cooler, system fans. Most of the time, you do end up getting a hard drive and like 4 gigs of RAM and then that really crappy CPU. But you drop in a new CPU, you upgrade the RAM to 12 gigabytes using the 2 gigabyte DIMMs, and then you have a great PC. And also, it comes with a 525 watt power supply, which you might not think is a whole heck of a lot for an OEM, or for a power supply, but that is an OEM power supply designed for a higher heat situation where it is going to run better, more effectively, more efficiently, and they are built very, very well. Let me tell you, if you drop a Dell Precision T3500 power supply off of a building and it lands on someone's head, they will die. I kid you not, those things are literally like five pounds. They weigh a crap ton compared to normal power supplies. Actually, I shouldn't say they weigh five pounds because I don't know exactly, but they are heavy. They are very heavy. And that's ultimately where this comes down to. If you're having to decide between the Dell Precision T3500 and the Wanager X58 Deluxe, guys, it's a no-brainer. Go for the Dell. Simply because it's cheaper, it's easier, you're going to get it faster. Most of your parts you can find in North America and it's not hard to get your hands on. But that's where it does come to this kind of line. If you live in North America, you can do that. If you live in most of Europe, you can do that. If you live in Australia, you can do that. If you live in South America or one of the countries that has less access to a good used market, well, then the Dell Precision is no longer an option and the Huanager X58 Deluxe is what you should go for. Overall, you will most likely be spending a little bit more money on that, but it is accessible. And, like I said, I, they perform identically. If you were to put me in front of both machines, both with 24 gigs of RAM and an X5680, I could not tell you which one was which, because they would literally be identical. So, with all that said and done, what do I actually think about the Dell Precision T3500? I freaking miss this PC. As you guys probably know, this is my friend's PC that I built for her. This is the Joker PC. And... Yeah. I really wish I would buy another one. In fact, honestly, I am going to buy another one. Screw, screw even thinking about it. I'm gonna buy another one. These things are so much fun to work with. They are so much fun to customize and mod. And there is a community for modding. 
as well as the fact that they're pretty inexpensive if you can get your hands on one. In North America, or at least in the United States, I can pick up one of these PCs for about 100 USD. And that comes with a power supply, case, motherboard, CPU cooler, system fans, the whole nine yards. The only thing it doesn't have is memory, CPU, graphics card. You drop those three things in, you're good to go. I mean, granted, you could upgrade to an SSD instead of a spinning hard drive, but if you're on a budget and you've only ever had spinning hard drives, well, having another spinning hard drive isn't going to kill you. At least as far as I'm concerned. But I digress. I've been rambling on long enough. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, stay tuned because... You know what? Yeah, we're going to buy another Dell Precision T3500. We're going to do a full custom build on that thing, and I'm going to walk you guys through every single step of how I do it, what I would pick, and what we're going to do with it. See you guys later. Peace.